I'm Robert with Nomium, and we're going to take a look at the new breakout rooms feature in WebEx meetings. If you're not already using Cisco WebEx meetings, we don't recommend starting simply because it now has breakout rooms. I'm not going to get into the pros and the cons of WebEx, but if you're a small business or an individual, from setting up WebEx to using it with different participants is not the easiest route to go. If you, however, are someone working in a large company and you're forced to use Cisco WebEx meetings, then this video might be for you. And it is good news because finally there's video breakout rooms available. Also, if you've ever used WebEx training, they have had audio breakout rooms for a long time, but the WebEx training platform is one of the worst platforms that I've personally ever used, and I know a lot of other facilitators agree with that statement. So let's get started looking at the breakout rooms, how to use them, some things to expect, and some troubleshooting along the way. Now, right now I'm connected using the WebEx meetings app on my desktop, we will take a look at the browser version because the breakout rooms options do look different there. So if you notice my control panel here, there is no option at the bottom for breakout rooms. If you look around and you say, where are the breakout rooms? You will not see them here. What you have to do is go to your top menu under breakout. Now I know you can't see my very top menu because of the screen recording, but now you should see the drop down, enable breakout sessions and watch what happens to the bottom of my screen. There we go. Now we have breakout sessions enabled. We're going to click that and you'll notice this starts to look very familiar. Zoom's video breakout rooms have been leading the virtual meeting atmosphere throughout 2020. And if something works well, why create something different? And that looks like what WebEx has done. I have three guests with me today, and I'm going to create two different sessions. We'll create those automatically. We'll create those assignments. And you can see here that we can add a session if we need to. And I can exchange different people if I'd like to, but we'll keep it as it is now. Also, if we take a look at settings, again, look at some of these options. Hmm, some of those are very handy things I've seen somewhere before. These options are useful, especially when we want to allow people certain freedoms, like coming back to the main room after breakout session, or if we don't want to give them that freedom. Now, I'm going to start the breakout session. Now, as the host, I'm not in a breakout session. Now that my breakout sessions are open, even if my guests have moved to a breakout room or not, I can move them while the breakout rooms are open. I can exchange them with people or I can simply remove them from the breakout rooms altogether and bring them back to the main room. I can also broadcast a message. I can send it to specific breakout rooms, which is useful, and I can send it uh, to all participants or I can send it to the co-host and the presenters. This feature of choosing which breakout rooms to, to send a message to or which type of participant is a wonderful feature. And that's something that some of our other platforms like Zoom don't have the ability to do. Now, like Zoom, one of the big problems with breakout rooms is that I don't have two-way communication with any of my participants when they're in a breakout room. If I want to chat back and forth, I will need to use an outside platform, email, SMS, WhatsApp, whatever you want to use, but that would need to be set up in advance. Another thing to notice about breakout rooms is that the chat function does not open in breakout rooms with the same content as the main room. If you're used to using Zoom breakout rooms, if I post instructions, in the chat box in the main room, everyone in the breakout rooms can open the chat and they can see that previous information that does not exist in the WebEx platform. 
Now I'm going to end the breakout session. And it will give my participants a specific amount of time to return if I've set that up or I can kick them out and bring them back to the main room earlier. Another useful feature with the WebEx meetings breakout rooms is I can give breakout room control to another participant. Now, in WebEx, we can choose to make them a presenter. Guest number one is already a presenter, but I can make them a co-host. Now, guest number one will have the breakout option show up in their control panel as I have it on mine. Another thing to notice as I allow guest number one to use the breakout sessions feature. Watch what happens when I, the host, try to go into breakout sessions. I can't edit them because somebody else is controlling them. So that might be a small limitation, but it's not a big deal. If you're trusting someone to run the breakout sessions, you surely can verbally pass control back and forth from one another. Another huge advantage that the breakout rooms have is when multiple people are co-host and they can control the breakout rooms, it allows them to go from one breakout room to another very easily. Now we're going to take a look at the breakout room experience and what that looks like as a participant. Even though I'm a host, I've been put into a breakout room by guest number one and guest number one will now activate the breakout rooms. You'll see that it does not force me in the breakout room. If I choose join later, I can go into the room whenever I want, as long as those rooms are still open by the host or whoever has control. But now I will choose to join. I'm the only person who's joined this breakout room, so you won't see the other people until they physically join. And now guest one will end the breakout rooms. 10 seconds is the minimum amount of time if you want to give them a warning. Excellent. Now that we're back in the main room, one thing that is a nice feature of WebEx meeting breakout rooms is that when I go into a breakout room, it does not make my windows close and then reopen. It does not reposition the windows onto different monitors, which sometimes does happen in Zoom. Now we'll take a look at what the broadcast message looks like to the people in the breakout rooms. You can see that the square takes over the entire center of the screen, which could disrupt the video and the view, but it won't disappear until you click OK. This ensures everyone has enough time to read the entire message. Now we're in the browser version of WebEx Meetings, and you'll notice the breakout session controls are a little bit different. We no longer have an app menu at the top, so we go to the More button. We enable breakout sessions. And now the breakout sessions will appear at the bottom toolbar. When we create those, even though I don't have any more guests here, one thing you'll notice is that there is no more broadcast feature. Why might we want to use the browser version, even if it doesn't have the broadcast message function? Well, it's because on a Mac, I can't use a virtual camera input through the desktop app version. The WebEx software simply blocks it. But if I use a browser version of WebEx, then I can use a virtual camera and it allows me to have different backgrounds and different slide backgrounds. So I would personally rather look better with slide backgrounds and not be able to broadcast a message. That just means I need to give clear instructions and have a backup channel for communication if needed in breakout rooms. There's two more problems I've noticed in the last two days since using WebEx meetings breakouts. Earlier when I was coming back from breakout sessions into the main room, my video stayed on as I wanted it. I had never turned it off. Now, and I've noticed this in a previous larger session, when I'm coming back to the main room, 
my video is automatically off, but my mic is still active. It's not a big deal. I can start the video. But for those of us who want to seamlessly move back and forth, it is not quite as smooth as I would wish. There's one more glitch that I've noticed in the WebEx breakout rooms since they've been available for two days. And it may be something that they fix in the near future, hopefully. The breakout rooms do not let you randomize or shuffle your participants automatically. You would need to do it manually. Let me show you what that looks like. If we go back into the breakout sessions, you'll see these rooms are created with guests automatically distributed. But when I go to reset, reset, reset. You'll notice it's not shifting any of them around. In order to do that, I can go to guest one and I can move them to another breakout room or just create a new one. I can choose to exchange them with somebody so I can swap them out with guest number two. That works. But keep in mind, if you have a large group and you have multiple breakout rooms and you do want to rearrange them, you will either need to find time to do that during a break or when they are involved in an activity in the main room, or better yet, get a producer, get a co-host, give them the breakout session control, and have them manually take the time to exchange people. But even then, when you have 50 participants and you want to truly randomize them, you will need to pay attention into which rooms they are going into and if you have a third rearrangement and a fourth rearrangement, getting a true random shuffle won't be random anymore unless you're paying very careful attention into how you're putting people in those rooms and even making a list or taking screenshots. We hope that you found this video helpful. If you're not using WebEx, we know there are other platforms that are much easier to set up, especially if you are an individual or a small business. If you are someone working for a company that requires you to use WebEx, we hope that you found these tips useful and happy activities in your new video breakout rooms.